walls feel like they are closing in on the Trump administration right now, and I'm not sure that they can hold them off for much longer. The walls are closing in and everyone is freaking out. The walls are closing in. The wheels are coming off the bus. The walls are closing in on President Trump. The walls are closing in with Trump on the defense. The walls are, are closing in on, on the Trump White House. All of the walls are closing in at this point. The walls are closing in fast on Donald Trump. If you are in a betting mood, bet that Donald Trump will be impeached. And then bet that, one way or another, impeachment will spell the end of his presidency. This is not wishful thinking for Democrats who have never liked Trump. This is practical politics, rooted in precedents from past impeachments and in an understanding of the dire circumstance in which Trump and his defenders now find themselves. Impeachment is, at this point, a moral and constitutional duty, but it comes with a political equation, and that equation does not add up to good news for our embattled president. And this week, the president has admitted to asking the president of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The, action of the, the actions of the Trump presidency revealed the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, has announced a formal impeachment inquiry against President Donald Trump. Acquiescing to mounting pressure from fellow Democrats and plunging a deeply divided nation into an election year clash between Congress and the President. The announcement on Tuesday came amid reports Trump may have abused his presidential powers and sought help from a foreign government to undermine former Vice President Joe Biden, the current Democratic frontrunner, and help his own re election. In a summer phone call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Trump asked for help investigating Biden, according to a White House released summary of the call. In the days before the call, Trump ordered advisors to freeze $400 million in military aid for Ukraine, prompting speculation that he was holding out the money as leverage for information on Biden. Trump has denied that charge but acknowledged he blocked the funds, later released. The Trump-Ukraine phone call is part of the whistleblower's complaint that was released this week. Trump has blasted the inquiry as witch hunt garbage and said he has done nothing wrong. Congress is determined to get access to Trump's calls with Putin, Zelensky, Mohammed bin Salman and other world leaders. Ukrainian president has made it clear that nobody can command them to do anything. However, we will investigate anything that breaches our law. On Saturday, the whistleblower's legal team sent a letter to Acting Director of National Intelligence Joseph McGuire, expressing their serious concerns for the safety of their client after Trump's attacks on their client. Trump has likened the whistleblower and White House officials who gave information to the whistleblower to spies and suggested they committed treason. A House committee will hear closed-door testimony from the Intelligence Community's Inspector General on October 4, a congressional official said on Friday. The hearing before the House Intelligence Committee relates to the whistleblower report alleging Trump abused his office in attempting to solicit Ukraine's interference in the 2020 U.S. election for his political benefit. Put aside the result of impeachment inquiry, the thing which is beyond understanding is that what made Trump to call Ukrainian president from his office while leaving behind traceable footmarks? Wise of the nation.